Okay, so in this video we're looking at the dispersion of white light and this follows on top of what I said in the previous video that white light actually consists of all of the colors viewed at the same time or um, uh, at least three of the um, color wavelengths that is being perceived at the same time but if we disperse white light in other words break it up into the different color spectrums or the different wavelengths then we actually perceive a rainbow of colors as illustrated here in this picture okay so what I'm going to do is just explain to you why is light doing this why when I shine light at an angle into a triangular prism does it break up into these different wavelengths and when it comes out it breaks up uh, or it disperses even more and eventually to show the color spectrum when it is shone on a, um, on a canvas or on some sort of light screen. Okay, so why does that happen? Well, the one thing that you need to understand is that when light travels in a vacuum, okay, so when light travels in a vacuum, then the speed of light is given by the um, constant c is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and uh, we've already mentioned that that's meters per second however when it is traveling through a medium when it travels through a medium in other words going through air or water or in this case a glass prism then there is what is called the index of refraction Okay, the index of refraction. Okay, and the index of refraction is given by the formula N is equal to C divided by V. So what is this all about? Well, don't worry about it. It's not that important. All that you need to know is that velocity in the medium is less than the speed of light. So the speed of light is actually the very fastest possible speed in physics. You can't go faster than the speed of light. So when light passes through a medium it goes at a lower velocity and if we take the, the speed of light divided by the velocity of that wave in that medium we get what is called the index of refraction. In other words, can almost be considered as a ratio by how much the um, the speed of light is being reduced okay in a sense you can look at it like that so that's the one thing that you need to understand and the high the, the denser the medium okay so the denser the medium so when density increases the index of refraction increases in other words the velocity decreases the velocity decreases. Okay, so why does this influence the refraction of light? Okay, so when light bends in a different medium, it's called refraction. Okay, and it bends towards the normal of the surface. Okay, so why is this true? Why does light refract? In other words, why does, first of all, um, why do the the frequencies bend and second of all why do the higher frequencies okay the shorter wavelengths bend more than the larger wavelengths okay well in order to understand that I'm going to use um, a comparison and I want you to imagine that we are we have a vehicle traveling in this direction so it's traveling at that direction and it is about to hit a stream of very very uh, shallow water and it's traveling at quite a, a high speed so here's just from the top looking at two tires okay, two of the wheels of this vehicle that's now two of the wheels okay it is going to hit this shallow stream at an angle which means that this bottom wheel you can see is closer 
than this top wheel and obviously they're traveling at the same velocity so that means that the bottom wheel the, or the one that's here at the bottom of the picture is going to reach the shallow water sooner now if this was let's say a tarry surface then it's going to have a higher velocity in on the tar than it has on the surface so once it reaches all this the, the water surface so once it reaches the water surface and the lower tire is going to reach that first it's going to start slowing down while the the tire at the top or the wheel at the top is still going at the higher velocity so if you have something going at a higher velocity than something else and they are connected like this okay you're going to have that the outside goes faster than the inside so it's going to turn okay, I hope you know that or that, that makes sense to you so what happens is that by the time that the second tire so the first well let me draw that okay the first tire has now entered okay here's the the picture after after it's entered a little bit okay and you can see only now that second tire has come in so the first tire has already entered and while while it was in there and going at a lower velocity the upper one had a higher velocity so it turned a little bit okay not much but a little bit and it turned towards the normal of that surface now we're assuming that this is a straight line it's turning towards the normal the perpendicular line um, that we have there now what is going to happen when it comes back out on the other side again well as you can see this one is still a little bit in front of that one okay I lie the bottom one <laughs> I just drew the top one a little bit this one is still a little bit in front of that one because it's still not going perpendicular if it was hitting this thing perpendicularly there would have been no refraction both would have hit at the same time okay but you can see it's still at a little angle so this bottom tire is still going to reach the other side first before the top tough tire so it's going to come out first and when it comes out it's going to be again on the tarry surface so it's going to go faster than the top tire so then it's going to be bending again okay this time away from the normal surface okay so now we have this type of picture and there it bends a little bit that way okay I wonder if that makes sense sense to you okay but do you notice how it bends away from the normal okay so when we go from a high uh, uh, velocity to a lower velocity in a medium that causes a lower velocity we bend towards the normal and if we go back to a higher velocity we are bending away from the normal okay that's the first part that is why when light a uh, white light enters a denser medium um, when it when it hits at an angle it is therefore refracted towards this, the normal of the surface which would be somewhere there okay and then when it comes back out it is refracted away from the normal okay so there's the normal to the surface okay it's refracted away from it okay and therefore it looks like it's bending twice there it bends a little bit off of its original path which would have been there okay it bends a little bit and then bends a little bit more off of its original path it would have been there it refracts twice and that's why a triangular prism works better to uh, not ref, uh, diffract it to refract it twice now the next question is well why does it separate the uh, different frequencies or wavelengths okay well think of it now at this time like this so we still have uh, we're still using tires as our example imagine here we have a small tire and we have a larger tire uh, or wheels sorry I shouldn't talk about tires wheels and uh, they're approaching also a puddle and um, they're going at the same velocity both of them are going at the velocity of 
the speed of light, let's say that. Both of them are going at the speed of light, hitting that. Now, which one has a higher frequency? Okay, hopefully you know that the, the smaller tire will have, or smaller wheel will have a much higher frequency than the larger wheel, because if it has to keep up, one turn for this wheel displaces, let's say, a meter, while one turn of this only displaces 10 centimeters. So it has to turn much faster, so the frequency, the turns per second or per minute is much higher. So when it hit, hits the puz uh, puddle of water, which one is affected more? Well, I hope you it makes sense to you that the smaller one, the one with the higher frequency, is affected more than the one with the lower frequency. So if I, if I look at this, which has the higher frequency of light? Well, let's go and have a look at our... Well, I don't have it up here. I have it up here somewhere. Yeah, let's go look for it. Okay. Uh, the longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency. Okay, we see that from here. Frequency is equal to um, velocity divided by wavelength. So when wavelength increases, numerator increases, the frequency decreases. So the longest wavelengths are the red, okay, which means they have the shortest frequency. The frequency for red is lower than the frequency for blue. So the red wavelengths, yes, they will bend, okay, but the red wavelengths will not bend as much as the blue wavelengths will bend. So if we have blue wavelengths, the blue wavelengths will bend more than the red wavelengths and the other wavelengths in between will obviously bend in between there. So because the frequency for blue is higher, he, blue is almost like this small tire that is more affected by the change in velocity than the bigger tire, which I should have drawn red and this one blue, shouldn't I? I should have thought ahead on that one. I'm sorry I didn't, but I hope I explained to you why does the blue get affected by the refraction more or is refracted at a greater angle than the red. Okay. I'll uh, see you in the next videos. Uh, hopefully we're getting to some practical examples soon. Bye.